Hello, experimenters. I'm Seth Noir, man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting you've seen it. Uh, hey, I bet you'd like to know about density, buoyancy, Archimedes principle, fluid physics. Let's go. So the first thing we're going to find is the density of water. So we're going to take a pycnometer of a known volume. If we can find the volume of the water inside, the mass of the water, we're going to find the density by the ratio. So the volume is written right in the pycnometer. Not exactly 25 milliliters. Uh, let's see, for me it's 25.19 milliliters. Okay, and so to find the mass, well, all we need to do is find the mass of the pycnometer without water, find the mass of the pycnometer with water, take the difference, that's the mass of the water, we can find the density, let's go. Okay, so we have our triple beam balance here. Uh, first, adjust a little knob on the side, make sure the needle is perfectly centered. Of course, my needle is perfectly centered. And then, take the mass, and let's find the mass of the pycnometer. Uh, excellent. All right, so now we're ready to fill it with water. While we're here, let's grab the temperature of the water. Look on it flush without a parallax, one decimal point. All right, and then fill it with water. Uh-huh. Okay, terrific. And now put the lid on. It's okay if a little popped out the top. Clean up any excess water. We don't want any excess weight get the mass of now the pycnometer and the water. The difference that's neat. Great. Find the density done on to part two. Ah, part two, we're gonna find the density of an aluminum cube. Okay, so once again, we need the mass and the volume of this aluminum cube. Now to find the volume, well it's a cube. So we should be able to just take one dimension and then this cube it. But we're gonna need all three dimensions. Now, why are we going to need all three of these dimensions? Well, nothing's perfect, but also, uh, in these physics labs, the life of an aluminum cube is a hard life. We torture these poor things. We toss them, we drop them, we freeze them in liquid nitrogen, we boil them in water. There's bound to be some wear and tear, so let's get more accurate measurements with our caliber. Okay, so just a reminder about how these things work. We use a little blown up one here. Uh, so, how these works is this. This little zero here, uh, we can see that, I'll put it here. Okay, so we can see that it's past the one, so it's one point something something. And then let's see here, it's past the point one point two, so it's one point two. Now to find the second decimal place, we look at the bottom here to see which line at the bottom is flush to the line at the top here. And it looks like uh, two, so it's one point two two. All right, if you need more practice, eh, just take a ruler. Just take a ruler and measure some sort of preset distance, like five point eight three. So measure five point eight three and then confirm it with this just for practice. Okay, so now we take our three dimensions with our cube. Be careful of uh, the string here. All right, so take one dimension and take the other dimensions. It's around a cubic cube. Uh, it's around one cubic inches, so your measurements will be around 2.54 centimeters. Okay, great, so that's the volume. And now to find the mass, well, we put here and notice there's a little handle here. So we counter out back we, we counterbalance this handle with a paper clip on the other side. Alright, and then we find that mass. There's also a string here, but we're considering that negligible. Okay, find that mass. Now you have the volume. Now you have the mass. Bam, find the density. Let's go to part three. For part three, we have a brass cylinder. Okay, so first, we're going to find some weight, M1, mass M1, and then we're going to put the cylinder in some water, and we're going to find a second mass, M2, but this mass should be less because there should be a buoyant force equal to the mass, to, to the weight of the displaced water. Buoyant force should be going straight up. Now, to find this buoyant force, well, we could take the difference of these two masses. 
and multiply it by G. So the buoyant force will be delta M, G, and guidance. Let's go. Okay. Okay, so we're going to use this little handle, empty cup right here, put it in, use the little handle, hook it on, drape it over. Also, we're going to include this little hollow cylinder here. Now, this volume of the hollow cylinder happens to be equal to the volume of the brass cylinder. Do not put these two inside of each other. It might be tempting, don't do it. So just put this right on top of there. And now find M1. Now find M1. There's M1, and now just take a just take a second to notice that if I push down, if I added a force going down, what side the needle goes, and if I added a force going up, what side the needle goes. So that should give us an idea of which direction the buoyant force is going. So I'm gonna so now completely submerge the cylinder in water. Make sure you completely cover it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so then let's knock out any air bubbles from underneath. Knock out those air bubbles. Ah, uh, yeah, look. Look at where the dirt, look at where the, the needle went. Okay, so now rebalance it. Find this new mass. That's M2, so find that. And then after you find this new mass, M2, reset the scale back to M1. So it should be unbalanced when we're back at M1. Ah, but remember we had this little cylinder up here. So I wonder what will happen if we add water and fill that cylinder up. Like adding the weight of the displaced fluid. Okay, so now we take this little flask here. Very carefully add the water in. Uh -huh. Okay, and then once we're close to the top, we take the eyedropper, and then we can add and remove water as needed. So we can add some, or maybe remove some, and so on. And take a close look at what happens here when you completely fill it up. I wonder what happens to the needle. Okay, that's the end of part three. Now, while we're here, let's just take the data for part four. It's the exact same thing. Except this time, instead of the cylinder, go back to the aluminum cube. Suspend the aluminum cube. Find that mass, M1. Submerse it in water. Knock out any air bubbles. Find that second mass, M2. Let's see what we're going to do. Uh, okay. So now, the difference and the mass is equal to the mass of the displaced water. So if we use the accepted value of water, we could find the volume of the displaced water. But the volume of the displaced water is also equal to the volume of the aluminum. So we can find the volume of the aluminum a second way. So now compare this second way with the first way by taking a percent difference, except use this one in part four as they accepted, and that's it. You're done. Extra credit to you if you bring a life preserver to the experiment. Goodbye.